welcome for tuning in. Welcome to another episode of In the Studio. My name is Lynn Weaver, and our guests today are Kelsey Gaylor and Eric Elton. They are here, welcome. They are here to talk about the uh, Interfaith Rotating Winter Shelter of Davis. I'm going to start with you, Eric, and I'm going to ask you, what is the Interfaith Rotating Winter Shelter? So the Interfaith Rotating Winter Shelter is a homeless shelter that is entirely run by volunteers uh, in Davis. It operates uh, with the help of local congregations, 10 local congregations, well, many more local congregations, but 10 specific ones. In that, Davis. In Davis. Yes. All of them in Davis that host um, 25 to 40 homeless individuals each night and they all take a week and then we rotate every week through them and for 15 weeks out of the year we're able to uh, have a homeless shelter. Uh, tell me a little bit about you. What, what do you do and how, how did you come to be involved with this yeah. uh, wonderful initiative? Yeah, so uh, like I mentioned we're an all volunteer shelter. Um, so I'm a volunteer. I'm the chair of the board of directors. Um, and I can be involved through my church. Um, mm -hmm. I did a lot of the driving for the shelter, driving homeless guests around. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, were, I was so good at that that they, they promoted me to be in charge of the driving. And I was so good at that that they promoted me to being on the board of directors. And I guess I was really good at that, so they made me chair of the board of directors. How, um, how much of your time do you spend uh, oh. dealing with the... With the, uh... So uh, it varies greatly depending on the time of year. When the shelter is open from late November to mid-March, um, it's probably 20 hours, 10 to 20 hours a week. Uh, during the rest of the year, when it's just kind of board meetings and policy decisions, um, it's maybe 10 to 20 hours a month. Oh, that's very, very nice. Um, and uh, uh, I would say, how many people do you serve, roughly? Yeah, so we house 25 to 40 individuals per night. Um, it depends on how many people come and then also what shelter site we're at. Um, some are bigger than others. Each year we house or help about 120, 140 individuals uh, and unique individuals uh, every season. Uh, how do the homeless uh, people come to you? Or how do you find them? So we, we don't find them. They find us. <laughs> um, but we, we have uh, one central site that never changes where we do an intake processing every night. Yes. Um, sort of a, like a triage. Yeah, kind of like a triage. And, yes. and we also, so we don't, uh, we try not to turn anyone away, but we want to make sure that anybody that comes in is capable of, of being safe and being part of a community. Because when you're in a big room sleeping with people, you know, you have to be... You can't be off your, you yes, can't be crazy, course. right? You can't be disruptive. Uh, you can't be disruptive. You have to be able to commit, obey and that sort of thing. Yes. Um, so it's kind of a triage and it's just to make sure that everything that happens actually in the shelter is, is okay. Is that, okay, yes. Um, but we try not to turn people away for being drunk or being under the influence. Um, we're the only shelter in Yolo County that will take uh, people that are on alcohol or on drugs. Well, that's a very interesting because that's later I'm going to ask you a little bit about what kind of support there is at the level of the county and uh, also the state in, in yeah. a way. Um, but uh, now I'm going to, uh, Kelsey, how did you learn about the, the shelter? And I understand you are a student now or a graduate student? I'm not, uh, I'm not currently a student. I learned um, about the shelter in my last year at UC Davis in 2014. Uh, I was at a meeting for, for a future career in healthcare and I stumbled across a flyer and mm -hmm. I was lucky enough to meet one of the people who helps, is uh, very involved in the shelter, Linda Scott. And so we chatted about the shelter and I applied and uh, was accepted into the program to be an intern, so very fortunate. And how long did you serve as a volunteer for the center? Uh, I've been in different positions, but this will be my fourth year volunteering for uh, IRWS. 
that's a that, that's a wonderful thing. But we, I, I want to go back to Eric. Where do the guests come from? The homeless population. What type of uh, population group are they? So there are in Davis. There are kind of two um, subsets of homeless individuals. Um, the first are people that have been in Davis for years, um, long term, if you will. Some of them grew up in Davis. Some of them uh, moved to Davis to start careers and then ended up on the streets somehow. Um, but they've been here for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, the other ones are kind of transient people and they're just moving around, some of them perpetually, mm -hmm. um, a lot of times for, and they just come through Davis uh, for a couple of days, maybe a week, um, and then they move on to somewhere else. That's interesting. Um, I uh, came across uh, a diagram or a, uh, a picture of a statistics, and perhaps we can have it up on the screen, that shows um, it's a crosscut of um, uh, homeless uh, on the night of the 23rd of uh, January 2017, and it shows a breakdown of Davis and homeless sheltered, homeless uh, semi-sheltered, and homeless unsheltered. The blue one being sheltered, the hybrid is the red, and the other one is the unsheltered. And there's a comparison between Davis, Woodland, and Yolo County. So uh, it is a little difficult to see, but hopefully when you stream it uh, on our website, you'll be able to uh, view it in, 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 in a Zoom uh, form. So uh, Eric, um, do you, uh, approximately, how many homeless do we have in Davis, particularly? So it's, it's difficult to say. Um, it's approximately 120 to 130. It's quite a lot then, yeah. Um, yeah, it is quite a lot of people. Yeah. And the goal of the center um, is, of course, to, to be helpful to yeah. people who are not fortunate but uh, also specifically is to, well, tell me about the goals. Are, so you know? our, our goal is to provide shelter. That's, that's the sole purpose of the IRWS. Um, especially during the winter months. And month. then especially during the winter months because it's cold and wet and yes. rainy and nobody wants to be out. Yes, that's right. And uh, the physical location of these uh, rooms, uh, where mm -hmm. are they? So they're at uh, different congregations around Davis. Mm -hmm. um, you said about 10. About mainly. 10. Yes. Um, you can probably see them if you look at a map of churches in Davis, but it's anywhere from Davis Community Church in downtown Davis, um, the University Covenant Church, all the way out on Mace or First Baptist Church. Um, that's three. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to list the others. No, seven no, but uh, the whole spectrum. The, the whole spectrum, yeah. Yes, yes. So and any church that doesn't have a, a nursery school attached to it is probably a part of IRWS. Yes, and of course uh, you also provide uh, food for the night, yes. Uh, and that is provided by volunteers. volunteers yeah. And maybe I come to Kelsley again to ask her, what do the volunteers do? There are various roles, and you've been in several of them. Can you list them, what the volunteers do? Yeah, and feel free, Eric, to jump in, because he has a holistic understanding of the <laughs> entire operation. Yes. Um, so volunteers are anywhere from actually serving at intake, which was the triage center, to driving the homeless guests from triage to the different uh, congregations. And then in the congregation, we have volunteers serving meals. We also have the interns um, helping pass out sleeping bags and getting helping guests with generally whatever they need, giving them toothpaste, socks, things of that nature. Um, and so uh, we also have overnight volunteers, which are volunteers that will come and stay with the guests overnight just to... To monitor. To monitor, but also mm -hmm. to provide extra support and, um, you know, help the guests with whatever they need. Uh, and so we pretty much have volunteers in every possible role. Uh, and so I have served as an intern um, passing out uh, sleeping bags, but I've also served in the senior intern position, uh, which is educating other interns on the operations of the shelter. Uh, it's wonderful. And uh, the, the question that comes to mind, Kelsey, and also Eric, 
what is the response of these uh, homeless people? Uh, how, Kelsey, uh, what, what was your impression? What did they say to you that uh, was either positive or negative? I've had many positive interactions um, mm -hmm. with the homeless community. Uh, you know, sharing stories about their lives and um, learning about uh, different cultures that they come from and how they've grown up. And generally, I would say they uh, they are very warm and positive towards the volunteers. And um, I've had many positive experiences with them. Well, while I'm asking Eric the same question, perhaps you can think of one particular case that moved you or angered you or whatever, you know. So, Eric, uh, what, what, was it, what do you think the, the homeless think about this? So, uh, they're very, I mean, I think they're very <laughs> grateful for it. Um, you know, yes. they're, they, they appreciate having a place to sleep that's warm and dry and having a hot meal. They don't get very many of them. Um, the thing that stands out, Kelsey kind of mentioned that they, they come from a variety of backgrounds. Yes. And the thing that really, when I, when I started this, he's kind of, I was driving, right? So you have like four or five minutes when you can talk with them in yes. a car. Um, and I would ask them about their backgrounds. And a lot of them, you know, had careers, had things going for them. And then, you know, something happened mm -hmm. and they ended up on the street. And you always, it will always surprise me the variety of backgrounds mm -hmm. um, that people would come from and end up as homeless individuals. That's very nice, a, a very interesting response. Uh, and if you can't think of any particular anecdote, it doesn't matter. <laughs> no, no, I can think of one. Uh, so I had befriended or, um, you know, developed a relationship with one of the homeless guests who I really enjoyed, ha you know, having dinner at the shelter with um, and learning about his background. And uh, one of the evenings he had come up to me and he he was at UC Davis graduation for some reason and mm -hmm. he had bought like a t-shirt and it had all of our names that were listed that were graduating and he gave it to me and he just said that I just wanted to let you know how much I appreciate uh, what IRWS provides um, and how grateful all of us are as a community for, for this shelter. And so I think that um, that that interaction has really stuck with me because I think that it shows that uh, as an intern you can learn a lot about um, the people that come to the shelter, as Eric had said, and also um, that they appreciate what we're doing for them. It's a, it's, a, it's a very good story and very nice. And that brings up my other question is, is how did this experience serving as a volunteer for the uh, interfaith rotating winter shelter uh, changed your outlook on life? Um, so it's changed my outlook on life in, uh, in un having a better understanding of the variety of ways that people can, um, wind up homeless. Yes. Uh, like Eric said, it's surprising at times to see, uh, you know, people with masters, people, uh, with very strong professional careers finding themselves in this situation. So I think that, uh, it was... It was a good experience in learning about the fact that we are not so different from each other, the homeless and people that are sheltered, that there's more similarities than differences. Very uh, good, very good. Now, uh, uh, I mentioned earlier that, uh, yeah, do you have the, are the Yolo County or the city of Davis uh, provide a lot of support for homeless? Yeah, so uh, we're very fortunate to count with the city's support. Um, Good. They've given they've given us financial support, and this yes. year we're actually going to use one of their facilities as our intake site. Good. Um, and they're starting to uh, see the need and, and have more resources available for homeless uh, homeless outreach. Really. Yes. Well. I'm afraid our time is up. It went very quickly. I know, Eric, you're always looking for volunteers and your website will be on display. Absolutely. And uh, so if you'd like to consider having an experience with the shelter, 
please contact Eric uh, and uh, through the website. And Kelsey, the best of luck for your life. And thank you both for coming, giving us the time and telling us about the shelter. So uh, as I said, I'm afraid our time is up. Uh, thank you all for watching. And uh, if you'd like to see this program again, you can stream it at dctv.davismedia.org. And uh, also, uh, while you're there, you can check out some of our other programs. We have wonderful topics and outstanding guests. So thank you, Kelsey and Eric. And from all of us here at Davis Media, thank you so much for watching and see you next time.